Hello everyone, welcome to part 7 of my line following robot series. In the previous episode, I explained how to handle sharp turns, stop points, T-junctions, and cross intersections. In this video, I will show you how to calibrate sensor values for different types of tracks, then save those values permanently in the EP-ROM. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. For this series, I'm using my custom-designed PCB carrier board made specifically for line-following robot. I have designed the board using EasyEDA software and printed it from JLCPCB. JLCPCB provides easy, affordable, and reliable PCB and PCBA solutions, empowering electronics engineers to develop projects efficiently. To place my order, I simply uploaded the Gerber file to their website, selected the quantity and color options, and finalized the order. You can get 5 high-quality PCBs for just $2. What's more impressive is that JLCPCB provides real-time tracking of the entire production process, so you know exactly what stage your order is in. After a few days, PCBs arrived at my doorstep. The quality of the PCB was top-notch. Then I assembled the board with a required component. Then I tested the PCB and everything worked perfectly. If you're looking for a smooth, affordable, and professional PCB manufacturing experience, JLCPCB is the way to go. You can order this board directly from us, and when you purchase it, you'll receive a fully functional operating system with an OLED display, which is completely free with the carrier board. To place an order, simply visit our Instagram, WhatsApp, or Facebook page. Now, let's understand why line calibration is important. Normally, we get high analog values from a black surface and low analog values from a white surface. Printed banner surfaces are not fully black, so we often don't get the maximum possible analog value from them. On the other hand, if we use regular tape, which is pure black, we get higher analog values. These readings also vary depending on the contrast of different tracks. We convert analog values into digital values using a reference point between the highest and lowest analog readings. This analog-to-digital conversion depends entirely on the reference point, which makes it very important. For example, the Arduino Nano has an analog range from 0 to 1023, so the reference value is 512. If the highest value from the sensor is 900, the reference becomes 500. If the maximum value is 700, the reference becomes 400. If it drops to 400, the reference becomes 225, which is the worst case. If your sensor gives such low maximum values, you should consider changing its circuit. Because the reference value varies depending on the track, we need auto calibration to calculate the reference value for different tracks and save it permanently in EPROM, so you don't have to modify the source code every time. Let's understand what EPROM is. EPROM is a non-volatile memory that permanently stores small amounts of data even when power is off. It allows the microcontroller to read, write, and rewrite data in specific memory locations. The Arduino Nano has 1024 bytes of built-in EPROM, which stores data permanently in one-byte cells, holding values from 0 to 255. For a detailed explanation of EPROM, you can watch this video YouTube channel ElectroNube. Now, let's move to the coding part to implement the auto-calibration routine. I'm opening the code from the previous part and continuing from where I left off. First, I am creating a new tab for the sensor calibration code. In this tab, I'm writing a function called Calibrate Sensors. Inside this function, I will write the calibration logic. Since I've already written the code, I'm copying and pasting it here step by step to save time and keep the video concise. I start with a loop to set the initial minimum and maximum ADC ranges in the max ADC and min ADC arrays. I then define these two arrays at the beginning of the code with sizes based on the number of sensors. Next, I define four directions for the robot's movement. After that, I insert the part of the code that moves the robot and takes sensor readings as it moves from left to right. 
This section stores the maximum and minimum analog readings of each sensor into the max ADC and min ADC arrays. Once this stage is complete, the robot stops. Then, this part of the code calculates the reference value by adding the minimum and maximum values and dividing by 2 for analog to digital conversion. It then saves the maximum, minimum, and reference values to their corresponding EP ROM addresses using the EP ROM write function. I divide each value by 4 because analog readings can go up to 1023, but Arduino's EP ROM can store only up to 255. Later, while reading from EP ROM, I multiply the stored values by 4. Next, I define an array to store the reference values, again based on the number of sensors. At the top of the code, I include the EPROM library to access the Arduino's built-in EPROM. Since we have written the code to save values into EPROM, we now need a way to load these values whenever the Arduino starts or reset. So, I created a function called load calibration, which loads the saved calibration data from EPROM. Here, I multiply each value by 4 because they were divided by 4 before saving. This function also displays the loaded reference values on the serial monitor. I then call this function inside the void setup so that the values load every time the Arduino starts or reset. After that, I use the reference values for the analog to digital conversion. Now, I simply call the calibration function when button 1 is pressed to start automatic calibration. I upload the code and test the calibration routine. When I press the button, the robot moves right and left to expose the sensors to both white and black surfaces and read their values. Then, I connect the USB cable to check the calibrated reference values for each sensor in the serial monitor. As you can see, when I reset the Arduino, the calibrated reference values appear in the serial monitor. To check whether the values are being saved in the correct EPROM addresses, I cover the rightmost sensor and leave the others uncovered. This way, only the leftmost sensor consistently receives low values, while the others receive higher values. After calibration, I reset the Arduino to verify. As expected, only the rightmost sensor shows a low value because it was always low during calibration, while the other sensors show higher values. For more clarity, I repeat the test. Then, I display the bit sensor values in the serial monitor to check the analog to digital conversion, and everything works perfectly. Next, I conduct a practical test on the track. First, I perform calibration by placing the robot on the line in such a way that each sensor can read both white and black surfaces. Finally, I run the robot, and it works perfectly. That's it for today's part of the video. In the next part, I will show you how to detect inverse lines and handle them properly. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel and give it a like. Your support motivates me to create more helpful content for you.